In the meantime, Governor Loki Ayedatiwa of Fundo State has hailed the Independent National Electoral Commission over the conduct of Saturday's election. The governor will vote at his word uh, for Unit 5 polling unit in Ilaje, local government area of the state, commended the planning and prompt deployment of election materials to polling unit Barainik. Some voters say the election was free, fair and devoid of violence. It's peaceful here. I believe it should be peaceful in other, in other location. I want to commend the security agency, the police, the civil defense, and all the, and the military at the background. Um, they are heavily deployed to be able to attend to any security threat. And I believe the people will comport themselves. Uh, we are peaceful people in Ondo State. Ondo State has been our judge to be one of the most safest and uh, peaceful states in Nigeria. And we'll be having our elections in a peaceful environment. And this very one will not be different. With what we have done in the last 10 months, the populace, the voters, like I said, they know who they want. And I believe I am in position to win this election because of the works that I have done in the last 10 months since I assumed office as the governor of the state. We traversed the entire the, the, the local government, we visited communities all across. And I want to say here that I was the only candidate that covered the entire 18 local government during the campaign period and also major communities, not just the capital city of the local government. I, I saw with my eyes, I felt the people, I, I listened to them, and I responded to their requests and their questions. And they are sad, but they are always excited at my appearance. So I believe they will try because because of the huge turnout during the campaign. I want to believe they will translate that law into votes today. Well, let's uh, get into the conversation right where we have an analyst in the studio here, and I he joins me now uh, to look at the um, you know on those state election and of course the process. We know that several questions arise, you know, regarding the electoral process. When you talk about the voter experience, you're also talking about the implications of the state, um, you know, um, state political landscape. You know, we know also that the coalition has already uh, started. But first, what's your assessment? of this election in terms of preparation. Uh, we hear that there was an alleged uh, vote buying already looking at uh, particularly, I mean, the exercise. So do you think INEC has uh, improved in all of these, uh, all of the exercise in the past, including this one particularly? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Let me quickly deal with vote buying. Mm -hmm. I, and I think at this time, we should no longer talk about vote buying as a concern because it's been Why? historic. It's historic. I mean, mm -hmm. every election, one thing that is a constant is that political actors will buy vote and voters will sell. So it's a trading atmosphere. Uh, it's more like a market economy, if you, if you, if you say that. So it has become a part of our electoral process? It is has that what become a part of our electoral process. And unless we, you know, but there are many strategies that have been uh, put in place. If, of course, I'm sure you would have seen uh, the arrest of some, some persons who were allegedly taking money to put in to, to buy vote. Mm -hmm. That is one way. We've, um, the FCC have been deployed time and again. Uh, DSS did the job now. EFCC continue to do their job. Of course, ICPC continue to deploy to counter those. Um, but what is important is the election as it were, where you talked about preparedness. And I think from a dual election to Undo, there have been some level of improvement in the way Anek has said they were going to do an improvement. Uh, even though people talked about some some kind of um, logistical issues around beavers, that in certain polling units, beavers didn't work. And arguably, uh, as at the time the, the voting was ongoing, particularly in the morning, um, we could only count around 51, 52 polling units. And of that number, NEC had replaced up to 70% of that number, which means about 30 or thereabout were replaced. Maybe a, a handful, like 10, 15, never got a beavers that eventually uh, for, the, for the election uh, 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 process. But it's important to say that 
what has been a major concern right now it's, uh, of course, maybe already beamed life, is the, the, the issues around conflict, um, violence in certain, poly, certain local governments, particularly in a Dore local mm -hmm. government, where uh, an alleged uh, usurpation or, 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 or oppression of voters are taking place. Mm. But, but, but we hear that il, il, the election was largely peaceful. I mean, how do we reconcile the largely positive report we're getting of a peaceful process, you know, with allegations of vote buying and voter inducement? But, but there was also a video circulating uh, of alleged uh, vote buying. But talk to us, what can we do? Can, do you think we can get over, you know, election inducement, vote, vote buying and rigging when it comes to an electoral process? So let me give you a bit of historical background, and I'll begin not too far, just 2016. After the Edo election of 2016, where the, the conversation was, don't show your ballot. So people go to vote, and then they, uh, you are, the party will eventually give them money. Right. And in certain areas, they discovered that the party that was giving money was losing. So they had to quickly suspend that process rather than give money to say, go and vote and show. And that went to Ondo election of 2016. Just don't forget, we just had an Edo election. So this is where we actually saw see and buy, right. where you show the ballot and you buy. So we've consistently maintained that if you want to stop vote buying, stop the showing of ballot. If we can, if we can bring some kind of barrier between the party agent, between the voter themselves and the party agent from showing it will reduce vote buying drastically. I'm going to hold you a bit, but let's cross live now to Accra, where uh, Arise, a senior correspondent of our daily standing by at the INEC Collection Center. Thank you, uh, Oba, for uh, joining us. But what is the latest now? You reported earlier that the election was largely peaceful. What's the latest now? Yes, everywhere is calm here in Akure, the state capital. And um, if you check behind me, you'll see that we are at the collation center here at the INEC headquarters in Akure. Any moment from now, the collation of results will start here. It is expected that um, the collation officers will sit on this table, you know, reading out the figures that they have. And the while representative of INEC, the returning officer, will sit in the middle over there with national uh, convener, host, DSS, and other officials will be at the IT with there. The election ended uh, peacefully with um, no report of violence in the places I covered. So I, uh, the collation, you know, had been concluded in this uh, polling unit and at the local government level. And that is what uh, they are bringing over to this place uh, for final collation and eventual announcement of result. Observers, you know, we have observers here, electoral officers, party agents, and journalists, everybody's waiting patiently here at the INEC headquarters here in Akure uh, for the collation of results to start proper. So any moment from now, the collation will get on the way. Even though the election was largely peaceful, the, you know, there was an alleged vote buying. And how did voters perceive the fairness and transparency of the election process, especially in the light of the state governor uh, commending the process that it was peaceful? And, of course, it was also giving um, you know, some level of credit to, to INEC in this uh, process. Uh, yes, there were reports of um, vote buying in some places, in some polling units, uh, which I cannot independently confirm. We were told that uh, men of the Department of State Security apprehended a man with raw cash going about, you know, distributing money to, to induce uh, voters during the exercise. He has been taken care of by the DSS officials. And um, some um, independent observers also corroborated that fact that the man was, um, you know, apprehended during the exercise. We're also told that, um, you know, somebody described it as a spiritual vote buying where you don't see the politicians with physical cash, but they have a way of getting across um, to the electorate to influence them uh, to vote in a particular way. I have one of the observers here. Let me ask him if, um, if, if um, indeed, uh, if they saw anything of sort uh, during the exercise. Tell us your name. Good evening, everyone. My name is Moses Oluashe, and I'm a program manager with the Inclusive Friends Association. So we're talking about vote buying during the election. Did you come across any case or any incident of vote buying during the election? Well, I would like to state here that um, 
the terminology vote buying oftentimes have reduced those engagements to one stakeholder. But I would rather advise that we begin to use terminology such as um, vote trading because without a seller, they cannot be a buyer. So apparently, our reporters actually reported issues around vote trading that happened within their pooling unit or that they also saw that actually happened around. And of course, just like you said earlier, there have been a trending video around the states that have been circulating. But I, I, I don't also subscribe that we get carried away by one person who is apprehended across over 3,000 pooling units, where, of course, vote trading actually um, happened in one case or the other. So I think strongly, yes, there are issues around vote trading, but of course, it also have a way of limiting um, what we should expect and defining where the results will eventually go to. All right, let, let's talk about the conduct of the exercise generally. It was largely peaceful in places I covered. Um, let's talk about, um, you know, um, the performance of INEC in this election, the performance of the security agent in this election. What's your assessment as an observer? So, um, for us at Inclusive Friends, one of our basic focus area is, also, is always around issues of persons with disability where we ensure to assess deployment of electoral assistive de um, devices such as the form EC30EPWD which of course is a poster in a pictorial manner that ensures to give directions to deaf voters while on the field and a huge number of places where we deploy our um, observers to of course, we saw these posters being, de being deployed by INEC, and these posters were also pasted. We also tried to capture track um, deployment of the form EC40H, which of course is a form that captures data of persons with disability in a disaggregated manner. This also we must give back to INEC. We saw all of this being in display and being used even though the number of persons with disability at most of these pooling units were also in low number, which of course is largely around low voter turnout. Also for us, we try to track issues around magnifying glasses and deployment of the Braille ballot guide that would have provided independent opportunity for blind voters to be able to vote. But we find out that um, there were low deployment of these um, materials. No, not to say that there were no deployment, but of course, they were not as much as we would naturally as expected to see while on the field. INEC has actually also demonstrated um, the implementation of a policy that talks around priority voting for persons with disability. This within our coverage area where we deployed our observers to. Of course, we also saw issues around priority voting for persons with disability. And most instructively is also around accessibility. We find out that um, some of these polling units are not still accessible for persons with disability, especially those with physical disabilities. But um, also some places we find out that officials actually set um, polling units on flat surface ground to help reduce issues of inaccessibilities. Okay, uh, Frank, it will interest you to know that um, earlier in the day I spoke with the president of the Abino Foundation, that's Mr. Jake Epile, and um, I think he had um, a slightly different perspective from what this gentleman just told us. Perhaps he saw uh, much more because at that time the exercise uh, was just starting afresh. Let's, let right. me have a word or uh, two. Ju just a uh, moment, Oba. So, Oba, can you hear me? Well, let's start with... Oba, the, can you hear me? If you can on, hear me... On. I can hear you, Frank. Yes, uh, let me just you. put you on hold. Let's take some reactions from other observers, just like, uh, you know, the man speaking with you there. But let's take some reactions from other observers. Now, leading civil society organization monitoring the Undo governorship election, YAG Africa has reported a largely uh, smooth voting process in the election, but raised concerns over the widespread vote buying. According to Yaga, Africa voting commenced in a 91% of polling unit as of 9.30 a.m. with INEC officials arriving promptly and materials adequately deployed. The organization added that, however, caution dismissed by APC and PDP agents were reported in several areas with amount ranging from 5,000 to 20,000 naira. While the DSS arrested a suspect in Akure, other incidents went unaddressed. Yaga Africa urged INEC and security agencies to enforce guidelines and prosecute offenders who are calling for patience and peaceful participation from voters' escalation begins. 
agents stationed at Odulufe, Omoke, Odoshika, Ogungobe polling units in Ileoluji, two ward of Ileoluji local government, was observed offering cash inducements of 20,000 Naira to voters in exchange for their votes for the party. Unfortunately, security agents did not intervene to stop this action. Voters at Ogun Saruku area polling unit in Ilara 2 Ward Ifedore local government area revealed how they marked their ballot papers to agents of the APC in exchange for cash gifts. The security personnel present did not respond to this situation. PDP and APC agents were observed bribing voters with cash incentives ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 at the Elegiri Ediro compound polling unit in a Lara Ward 1 Ifedori local government area. Let's go back to, um, you know, Oba Adeoye, who is still standing by. Thank you for standing by, Oba. But, I mean, before you take, um, you know, Jackie Pele or some other observers, there are reservations from PDP's uh, Agbola Jai on the election process specifically. What were his complaints and how significant is this issue in the context of the overall cred credibility of the election? Don't forget the PDP candidate also co uh, complained about vote buying as well as well as the APC candidate. Um, yes, you know, in the build-up to the election, the opposition parties uh, were full of complaints against uh, the election management board, the INEC. Um, they passed a vote of no confidence on the resident electoral commission, that's Oluwa Toyin Babalola, saying that they don't have any trust or any confidence in the uh, lady to conduct a credible election. And they also came out, especially uh, the PDP candidates, came out to complain about um, the feelings of the uh, bimodal voters accreditation system, popular known as beavers. Of course, we had report that the beavers failed in some areas, but in areas where I covered, not a single beavers failed in those areas. And um, uh, that is just um, uh, infinitesima when you compare to uh, about um, um, as if 4,000 beavers, beavers that were deployed uh, for this election. So, you know, politicians, we always have uh, uh, their complaint about uh, uh, processes like that. That, that is not... Uh, that is not strange. That is not just coming uh, afresh. But um, at the end of the day, we'll get to hear from INEC and other observers if indeed they agree with um, Agbola Ajayi that um, the, um, the process um, uh, is um, uh, deficient of, um, of credibility. Let, let me ask um, Jake here if indeed he agrees with um, uh, Mr. Ajayi in that regard. What, what, what well, well I, I did watch that uh, a clip of uh, his interview and the claim uh, that he, he gave. He, he said it took him about 10 minutes uh, for the beavers to work. And then we also saw the uh, uh, incumbent governor, uh, Loki, said that his own uh, viva worked. Uh, it's obvious. Sometimes when you're losing, uh, you tend to make excuses and uh, when you're winning, you also think to validate the process. However, uh, there is no doubt that there were flawed issues uh, on the part of the electoral umpires. There were issues that they did not take into consideration uh, or activate a plan B uh, to solve it. So there are places where I monitored and there were failures, and there are also places that I monitored and the BVAT worked uh, uh, accurately. However, technology has come to stay when it comes to the electoral process. And the earlier we embrace that and also ensure that the umpires will continue to tweak, the te technology changes every now and then. So there's a need for us to optimize whatever technology that we're using and let it meet the standard. But all, ultimately, let it be operational at the time that is required because this is what creates problem in the entire process. If you have a technological deployment that is not working optimally, the person the other, at the other end of the electoral process will complain and that, that person has a right to complain. So if the uh, uh, PDP candidate is complaining that uh, he had issues, you know, the important thing is that how will that complain and the issue impact the outcome of 
the election, little or nothing. And so, yes, such things should be addressed, but the question is, did it, it, will it impact the outcome of the election? I don't think so. Well, let's talk about uh, people living with disability and the elderly ones in this election. Um, what are your observations? Would you um, commend INEC for improving uh, in their you know, provision of amenities for PWDs? Well, in terms of provision, uh, because at TAF Africa we have set out our parameter. Number one is the preparation. Number two is participation. Number three is the provision. So let me talk about the provision. We went to, because we, we, we actually deployed strategically. We didn't want to spread our resources where it's not needed. So we were guided by data science. In other words, uh, the, the data that we received from INEC, we analyzed it and then did targeted deployment of, of, of observers. And even where we noticed there are presence of persons with disability, on reaching there, we saw that some of the materials required for by persons with disability were not deployed. So there were places we didn't see a single magnifying glasses, you know. And then there is presence of persons with albinism. There are also places where we saw, you know. Um, so technically speaking, I, I will not say that they, there, was, there was adequately no provision, provision, but the provisions were not adequate. And in most cases, uh, they, the people that will administer these uh, provisions are not totally aware on what to do. There were also places where they were on point. They were aware, they knew what to do, uh, and then you didn't see the persons with disability. The problem with our, uh, our community and when it comes to election is that of voter apathy. Many of them are, are scared to participate in the process and I don't blame them. Some of them are scared of uh, the security right. implication. Others are scared that they won't get the provision. Yes. Thank you so oh. very much, Mr. Jacob. Oh, thank, thank you again. Thank you. And I want to thank Arise for the, the kind of attention you have given to inclusion. Right. Thank you so Frank. very much. So Frank, you heard from him, um, that's his own assessment of INEX performance in this election as regards people living with disability. So it is expected that INEC uh, will take this uh, to the uh, drawing table and use as, um, you know, ingredient in planning for future elections. Thank Back you, Obadoyi, live for us from Akure, the Ondo State capital. Well, let's back to the studio here now. Of course, uh, we have Austin Aigbe of West Africa Democracy Solidarity Network. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I mean, he did, uh, you know, he did mention th the fact that the issue of uh, technology is improving. It's changing every day. Uh, how well are we catching up? I mean, do we have to start talking about, you know, improvement on our technology here that is deployed for use? And, I mean, are we already, you know, back <laughs> far, far away from where we are supposed to be? That's one. Secondly, he also mentioned the, uh, the issue of uh, logistics as well. I mean, before the election, INEC did say they were ready and that they were going to do everything possible to address the issue of logistics, uh, the late arrival of materials should, should have been a thing now. So talk to us about that. Should we, why should this be an issue? Why should we talk about this again? So uh, just to use the last question to back, mm. uh, be back on the first, mm. INEC is always ready in every election. <laughs> I mean, INEC declared Ondo election about a year ago, announced the date a year ago. So not to be prepared, we amount to a massive failure. So I think we always say they are ready. But with all due respect to that technological failure, uh, you, the only place I, I find it a bit of a challenge was because it impacted directly on the PDP's candidate. Otherwise, technology can fail at any time. I mean, the computer you bought yesterday, you can turn it on this morning and it's already malfunctioning. So I'm not saying that because the PDP candidate as flew a cat earlier mm. to say there was a challenge with the, the wreck 
and suddenly is now imparted by the technology. It, it, it was always like a flag. But however, even in 2015, you know the, uh, the smart carrier at that time had issue with former President uh, uh, Goodlord Jonathan. It will continue to be. But uh, as I tell you, the fact of the matter is that the beavers had improved greatly. When it started, the first time the beavers was ever used, even in Abuja year, the FCT elections of 20, I think 2021 or there, but 2021, 2022 specifically, mm. the beavers massively was largely defected until there was some form of improvement when he went to Ekiti in that election. And in Ekiti, it was still a challenge. But when he moved on to Ondo of that same year, 2022, it was as if there was a magic. It just turned around. But back to 2023 elections, we hear what we now call the glitches. But uh, with all due respect, technology will always advance. I mean, the tablet you used yesterday, you are always looking for the new one. I mean, all of the technological guys are doing, they're releasing. Uh, but I, I think that technology should be advanced in a way that reduces the pace of announcement of results. And I also think that technology can reduce the human error in our collation process. The greatest bane, the weakest point in our electoral system today is our collation process. For when the result leaves the polling unit, you thought that you, have, you may have won the polling unit. That means by way of announcement of result at the polling unit, you, you won. I mean, you won the, the, the polling not winning the election. We could have two, type, two types of winning. You've not been declared winner. But however, you won at the polling unit. You can actually lose at the collation level. If there are calculation error, for instance, Beaver's um, um, ballot paper issued was 200. And here you are calculating 10 ballot papers are missing. You have to account for it. Or if there are just typo, typo error by human error, you know, when human beings are writing, sometimes I've been in a place where pre pre President Officer was calculating, uh, was reporting on the form EC8A, he wrote 236. But in word, he wrote 136. This is, I mean, you are looking, let, and, let you, me, and you can't really Permit me change. to butt in here. Uh, in terms of improvement in our technology and our voting process, what would you like to see? Because a lot of people have talked about the, the how seamless the American system is. I mean, you need to vote ahead. If you want to vote from the comfort of your home, you don't even need to shut down before you vote. You can vote from office, can vote from anywhere. And that is what just happened in the election that just took place in, in the presidential election in America. Speak to us um, how close are we to that? Is it something that we need to start talking about now? Is it feasible in the Nigerian context? I mean, given the fact that this is a developing nation and the democracy is still developing. Thank you. I've done a lot of work on this and I've tried to, let me just give you what I think is it, is it, is it direction. Number one, introduction of beavers as a voting machine. We need, whether you call it beavers or any technology, Get, and I think that the beavers can't do it. It's just to mm -hmm. update the apps and create the interface. Mm -hmm. create, I mean, it happened in, in, in Kaduna during local government elections, so it's not new in Nigeria. So have an electronic voting, not an electronic, not an internet voting, because I don't want to say we have gone to that point because of hacking and all of that, unless there is a deployment of blockchain technology. Even in blockchain technology, there are those who manipulate the process. What I'm saying is that you vote electronically at the polling unit, number one, you would have, would have eradicated totally ballot papers. Ballot papers are costing Nigeria a lot of resources. We don't, need, we don't have to go ahead with it, especially now that the number of voters are increasing. We're gradually moving to 120 million voters, and that's, that's huge in a presidential election. So at the polling unit, vote electronically. The, the machine should be, the beavers should transmit to a printer right there, the smaller, small printers that you can carry about. It prints a form of um, uh, this machine, when you, when POS machine, mm. that card. You just print out a small paper that talks about the vote you voted. You fold and you drop it in a ballot box. So by the time the process is over, we tabulate this electronic device. Yeah. That is elect if it agrees, you tabulate, everything agrees, you compute the one on the beavers. Once you agree, you write the form ECHA result and have them agreed, the party agreed that it, both of them agrees, they sign, you transmit that result straight to a national portal. All of these word collation, local government collation, they are irrelevant for Christ's sake. We are past that stage. If it's going to be a local government election, maybe like as for assembly election, when you transmit that point of result, it goes to the local government collation where observers, party agent, was called a returning officer of that particular location is waiting. And it creates a dashboard. And everybody's seen it. You see what happened in America, like you talk about. I mean, I'd be privileged to see the American election in the particular Obama second election. And I saw uniqueness in their process. 
even though people were excited. You know, President Trump has not been officially declared as we speak. They have to be the electorate who have to appear at Capitol Hill to then officially declare that uh, Trump has won. But we all know that Trump has won. We don't need an INA well, to announce the result. To as a president elect, by the way. Yes, I mean, <laughs> he's president elect, but he's not been declared president elect officially. Okay. All right. I think we just have to leave it and, and see this conversation will continue. I mean, we, we will continue. Perhaps Nigerians will continue to put INA on it to ensure. No, we don't put INA on it. We put the National Assembly, they are the makers of the law. Mm. However, we need INA to concur. The Nigerian people must move toward and a state where we remove human error from this system. Mm. It is a people, and the people's house is the National Assembly. Uh, I get a sense that you're suggesting that we need to go back to review our electorate. But of course, <laughs> we, that's, 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 a, on anyway. well, that's the conversation for that. Thank you so much, Austin Aigwe, West Africa Democracy Solidarity Network. Thank you for coming on the news. I appreciate it. Thank you.